you, you, you might test somebody every now and then. You might get a, a person every six, seven months that's really, really sick that might be at a four or five. You know, you, you won't be able to get that kind of a test with a strip, and that's why, you know, if you're going to check with strips, make sure that if it doesn't, if it changes the color all the way blue or it doesn't change it at all, you really need to check it with a meter to get an accurate reading. I've read on these tapes that uh, you have to take the reading immediately. If you wait too long, the color changes. Yeah, it's accurate. You have to, you have to do it right away. <clears throat> um, if their pH is real low, the, the vitamin D is one of the things you can use to cheat with. Uh, something else you can use to cheat with, and this is one of the other things I'm going to probably get garbage over, is baking soda. Uh, if you take a teaspoon of baking soda in water and do that a couple of times a day, it will raise your pH. It will not raise it permanently. It's not going to be uh, anything nutritionally favorable for your body, but it will buffer acid. And um, I, I actually don't use the baking soda. I use the potassium bicarbonate. That's sodium bicarbonate. Same thing, that's much cheaper. Okay? That's, a, that's something that you can use for somebody that is really, really good. Yeah, if you use the vitamin D, can you do it then and then retest in a couple hours like you could with uh, baking soda? Or would you wait a month or whatever? Oh, uh, I mean, like, I test people, you know, three times a week. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's because they're here. Uh, right. If if you had a, a situation, I, I would be trying to look for longevity in working with people. If people are having to rearrange your, their schedule to come in and visit you every week, unless they're already coming, maybe for an adjustment or something, it might be um, too much and they might get burned out, you know, especially if it's multiple times a week. But uh, overall, you're looking at more of an average number anyway. Somebody's pH, you know, even if somebody's numbers, and this is one thing that people will get thrown off on is their numbers will begin to get in a normal uh, range and might stay there for a couple of days and they'll think they're all better, you know? And, and that doesn't really affect very much at all. It's about that staying there and then the right amendments coming in for a good period of time that the body will affect change. And that is that is one of the things, you know, when you're dealing with the REAMS uh, protocol, uh, there's very few things that will actually be like an overnight uh, miracle. You're looking at things in the idea of time. And I try to get people to be realistic, you know. Somebody goes someplace and they stay for a week, what are you really going to accomplish in a week? I mean, you might, you might see some, some really good change, but you're not going to get well in a week. You're not even going to get well in three weeks. But you can make change in the right direction, and, it, and then it's on their shoulders. If they, if they want to, you know, stay well, they've got to make those changes in their lives. Are you going to say something? Mm -hmm. Um, I think I covered. Did we have any other questions on changing the pH? When you when you're changing the pH, you're referring to either urine or saliva. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, which one's more important to change first? Mm -hmm. Well, acid or alkaline? Acid. Yeah. Um, all right, and. A couple other things. The vitamin C, uh, we didn't really touch on, but vitamin C, you, you don't want to take when your pH is low. Okay? Um, you're not going to do a whole lot for that person. You'll actually just make them a little bit worse. Because you're not, remember that idea of using the body uh, to maximize its own absorption. If, they're, if their pH is real low and you're putting in something that will act as a catalyst on the low end, it's really not going to affect any positive change. Um, Anything else we needed to cover? Was there a question about that in particular? On the other hand, then, you can use vitamin C to cheat if the pH is too high, too? If the pH is too high, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Um, I just want to understand, if, if your pH is low, like below 7.0, don't, or you can, you do take vitamin C, but if it's above that, don't take vitamin C. If it's below a 6.4, yeah, we don't want to touch the vitamin C. But here, here's one of those things that, uh, let's say somebody comes and they're sick, and, and um, their pH is a 5. And you put them on all this stuff, and their pH goes to an 8. What's one of the things that they're going to be experiencing? Constipation. Yeah, they're going to be all backed up. What's something that will loosen the bowels? 
vitamin C. Vitamin C. It really will. You give somebody a couple of grams of vitamin C, and it will begin to loosen up the stool. And so they're in a zone then in which vitamin C can work because their pH is high. You get how that works? So uh, you have a lot more uh, leeway to do things with pH high. Is there a lot of vitamin C in carrots? <laughs> no. Well, um, there, there's a lot of soluble fiber in it, but yeah, that's probably one of the things that you know most people when they first start drinking carrot juice, they'll experience. Uh, it's kind of a cleansing reaction, mm -hmm. but it, it'll stop in a little while. All right. Um, anything else that we need to cover in this? Um, might be it for, for the, the calcium rate. Was there anything else on pH that you think I should cover? I think we spent quite a... Uh, I think it sounds good so far. Okay, I think we spent a good amount of time on the pH, uh, a good amount of time on the calcium according to the pH. Most of you were pretty familiar with that. In the end of being on the pH, uh, at the pH ranges, when your pH starts to level out and you're getting into a good zone, what calciums are the best to be taking? About that. Minkle is a good calcium. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, what else? What other types of calcium? I know it's the lactate, just the one that seems like everybody's lactate. Um, you know what? Okay, like if the pH is is uh, six four, you're really not going to have too much trouble if you take a, a lactate or two. You won't. But um, usually, what you're looking for, yeah, glucanate would be a, a, a decent one. Uh, the, the citrate would be a decent one. Now, the ones that I would go for and grab first would be uh, those that, okay, there used to be a lot of hype about the chelated minerals. A lot of people were on chelated, uh, all sorts of minerals, multi-mineral chelated supplements. And um, most of those were bound to EDTA, which really is not anything that is particularly healthy for the body. But there's all sorts of amino acids that, uh, what can you think? Gluconate is a, a glucose base, okay? Um, citrate is a citric acid base, okay? <coughs> what about uh, aspartate? We covered that. That's an amino acid. That's a chelated calcium, okay? Uh, orotate, there used to be a lot of sources for orotate. I'm trying to track a few down right now that are, are not outlandishly high. Uh, a lacer, I think, used to make a uh, a good line of them, but I haven't seen them like well, in three or four years. So um, we're looking for something like that. Now the orotates actually have a better absorption than the aspartates, but the aspartates are really good. And there's there's a good calcium um, Ezorb. Have you seen that? <coughs> you used Ezorb. Um, <clears throat> Ezorb is being really highly promoted for like uh, women with osteoporosis. If you put a teaspoon of this stuff in a glass of water, it just dissolves instantaneously. Um, but Bailey does sell the, the calcium aspartate. It's, it's not real expensive. And, you know, ultimately, when we're getting into the idea of absorption, maybe I should touch on this, uh, and, 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 and we'll close this session on this point, or this class on this point, but we'll, we'll kind of go over past this, okay? Um, what we're looking at, as far as building actual energy, uh, building reserve, what's the RDA for calcium? You all know? Yeah, Most supplements will say 1,000 milligrams. Some of them that are a little bit more trendy will say 1,200. Uh, it's real common to say for a woman, for her to take 1,600, okay, because her needs are higher, right? So however we want to figure this, let's, let's say, I'm going to just for the sake of this argument, say a thousand for men, and I'm just, just putting it up there, 1,200, whatever. I'm going to say 1,600 for women. And uh, let's say, you know, we're, we're being told we need to take this much, and the calcium that we're being told to take is, maybe it's Citracal or... Um, Calcium carbonate, just a cheap calcium carbonate. Mm -hmm. Those absorption rates are, are going to be less than 12%. Calcium carbonate can be as low as 1%, 2%. Uh, on the higher end, carbonate can be like a 6%. Uh, 
Uh, citric acid may be up there 10, 11, 12 percent. There's going to be variables in these things, okay? But if this person here, um, let's say a man, and a woman, no, it's magnesium, calcium, calcium. Okay, let's say this guy is taking calcium carbonate and this absorption is 10%. We'll go on the high end on it. And he, he's told he needs 1,000 milligrams of calcium. How much calcium has he actually gotten out of that substance? Assuming all things went well. Yeah, 100. Yeah, he got 100 milligrams of calcium out of that deal. And our, and our lady friend here? 160. 160. Okay. Now, this is high. Those numbers are high. But it's known that uh, calcium is not absorbed very well. So I think in part of that correlation, they have raised those numbers. Ideally, if we could absorb an optimal amount of calcium, like if, if we picked up, uh, if our energy was, was really good, like we would pick up everything, we would be looking to absorb at least 300 milligrams a day. What about calcium from like kale and things like that? How much do you absorb from a, a organically grown kale? Hey, you, you, you want to know what's ironic in that? The higher the calcium is in that kale, the more of the calcium that will be absorbed. Does that make any sense? The higher it is. The higher? Yeah. The more calcium that that kale uh, has in it, the higher the percentage of oh, that calcium okay. will be absorbed. Mm -hmm. So if, if, a cal if a cup of kale has 300 milligrams of calcium, uh, maybe 250 of that gets absorbed. I'm not saying that's going to be. But let's say a cup of kale has 150 milligrams of calcium, um, and we're looking at absorption rate. You know, this is a much less uh, quality. Maybe that one only gets 50 milligrams of calcium absorbed. Mm -hmm. it's, it, it's a great disparency. Mm -hmm. You get it? Yeah. Because the calcium and the other minerals that are in it actually will aid in the absorption process and getting it into the body. That's why when we're dealing, and once again, in the agriculture part of it, when we're dealing with the higher bricks foods, those are therapeutic because their ability to get more nutrients into the cells goes higher as they go up. So... Um, like uh, when we have the refractometer, I don't know where it is, but but as we're seeing, as we're seeing, you know, a carrot that has, you know, a bricks of six, and we see a carrot that has a bricks of a twelve, the potential or the healing potential of that carrot that has a twelve is not twice that of the carrot with six, but it is, you know, uh, five six times. Does that make sense? The carrot that's like a 16, 17, it's like 10, 12 times. So the higher it goes, even though it's not necessarily exponential in, in the mineral content, although it does go up very greatly, the absorption rate goes up very greatly. I always use my refractometer to buy 100 pound bags of oranges in South America. Uh, they start at 9, I go to another dealer, and they made 12, and finally I get oranges at 17. Bricks, so I figured I had a good orange. Yeah. That's what they say, you know, like Gary Reams used to carry this with him on a chain to, to all the farmer's markets or wherever he'd buy produce. And whatever he found that was the highest quality, he would put it on there and he'd just buy whatever that was uh, because he knew that the potential for that to do something was that much greater. But he had it on a chain because when he would look through it, some of the people would want to know what they're doing, and after they knew who Reeves was, it wasn't that he was afraid of somebody walking off with it or something, or a matter of convenience, but that way they couldn't throw it on the ground and break it, because, you know, those that had poor quality didn't like being exposed for being, you know, poor gardeners. <laughs>